Morning everyone, hope everyone is okay. So this is just a quick video to show you a couple of repairs to a ceiling and to a wall. Um, you might have um, bashed a hole in a plasterboard with a furniture you're moving or a young child has smashed the wall after they've been playing a computer game. Or you've taken down a pendant and replaced it with another light and it's left a gap or you've put spotlights in or even uh, an electrician's fishing cable through ceilings. Sometimes we need to drill access holes and this is a great repair for that. So I'm going to run through the tools and stuff we need and then I'm going to get on with the repair. Items you're going to need to carry out this uh, small repair are a, a knife. Obviously be careful when using that. To repair the ceiling hole you're going to need a piece of wood. You're going to need some plasterboard screws to go with that piece of wood. A hole saw. Um, this is a 19mm. Um, this is a great size for fishing and getting your hands through and a drill. Um, an impact gun or a screwdriver, um, it's a lot easier with an impact gun and a pH bit. That's a PZ, but you want a pH with the plasterboard screws. You're going to want some plasterboard offcuts, some filling knives and a little pot. And my go-to filler um, that you probably all know now is 2-Prep. Okay, so here we go. We've got our, uh, our ceiling or our wall that we're going to repair. And the reason I know this is a wall repair is because it says wall. And the reason I know this is a ceiling repair is because it says ceiling, <laughs> conveniently. So if this was a ceiling, the reason we need the piece of wood is because we don't want our repair to fall um, out of the ceiling while the filler's going off. So what we're going to do first is open out these holes with our hole saw, okay? So obviously if you try and put that in the centre there, it's, gonna, um, it's going to um, jiggle around. You could put a probably 25mm hole saw through those and onto that and it would hold it. But what you can do, because this is a bigger hole saw, you can go off centre, okay, and still pick up the side of the hole. Okay, so that covers that up nicely and it keeps the hole saw nice and straight. So we're just going to go through now. Okay, so as you see there, we've taken out that horrible um, hole that we had in the wall there and we've now ended up with a nice symmetrical uh, circle there. So what we're going to do now is the same to the ceiling repair, okay? Off centre, make sure it covers, we go there and then drill it out, okay? Okay, so these bits of plasterboard um, will just get discarded in the bin. Next, we're going to grab our piece of batten or wood or whatever we've got, okay? So you want to make sure that it covers the hole and goes over by a couple of inches either side and then roughly get a pen or pencil and mark centre of the wood. Because when you're in the ceiling, you might think you've got centre, but it might end up like that. You'll try and put a screw through there and you're going to miss the piece of wood, okay? So if you've got that centre, you know you've got this much overhang of timber so you can put a screw anywhere in that in that area and you're going to pick that piece of wood up okay so what i normally do first is start them off just through the top layer of plasterboard okay like so and then if if you need to um help you hold the wood you can get a you can get a screw and put it center of that wood there and that acts as a small handle okay so what you do is you feed the wood into the ceiling and then you know that screw is, and that line is roughly center okay so you can pull on that ceiling now and screw those two screws in and you want to sink the screw below the plasterboard okay like so, and then remove the centre screw. So now that batten is completely fixed in that ceiling. That's not coming out anywhere. Next, you wanna grab your plasterboard that you're gonna actually repair your hole with, either at the wall or the ceiling. So you wanna draw from corner to corner on a piece of plasterboard. So roughly give yourself enough plasterboard so you can get your hole cutter, and then you want two inches from the edge of the hole cutter, okay, if that makes sense. So you've got enough for the hole cutter and then two inches overhang. Draw a line, 
centre, so corner to corner, that will give you centre of the piece of um, plasterboard. And then what you want to do is put your hole cutter centre of there, okay? So drill this out, but make sure the cutter doesn't come through this front plasterboard, okay? I'm not worried about the pilot hole because we need that to come through, but we don't want this cutter to pierce this um, plasterboard, okay? So you've got to be really careful, okay? So you just want it to bite through. You can put the drill on reverse um, and it won't pull the cutter too far. Like so. That's just started to come on that plasterboard. I can see that. So it hasn't pierced the paper, which is what we want to keep, okay? So next you want to get your Stanley knife. This is where you need to be really careful. And see the lines you've drawn? You want to cut to corner to corner. Okay? On top of the plasterboard there. Okay, this is quite a delicate bit. So we want to preserve this paper covering up on here. We don't want to break this as such. So what we need to do now is snap these four pieces of plasterboard gently, okay, off of that front paper, okay, without breaking that front paper there, okay? One, two, three, four. Okay, so what we've got there now is a nice repair patch. It's going to go in there and it's going to give us a nice finish on this edge, okay? Don't worry about this curling up, okay? Because once we get the filler on there, you're not going to notice that. So I'm going to crack on. I'm going to cut another one of these out and I'll see you back when I've got both these patches ready to go. Right, so I've now got our two patches um, ready and prepared. And as this is the ceiling, clearly that would, that would flop out of the ceiling, okay? So you see why we got the piece of wood now. All we're going to do is just secure this patch in with a screw first, okay? I probably wouldn't go through that hole there because it's going to be too big, so just go off centre, okay? And if you want, you can put two two screws in there if you want. It doesn't need it in my eyes. And again, make sure it sinks below that um, plasterboard there. Like so, okay? So that one's fixed in place. That's in the wall, so it doesn't need fixing because it, it's not going to fall out, okay? Next, you want to mix your filler up. And I'll show you the consistency that you want for this type of filling, okay? Just mixed up my filler, and as you can see, it's not falling off the, the trowel there. It's of a nice consistency. It's not too thick, and but it's not too sloppy, okay? It's not going to make a hell of a bloody mess when you start putting that on. So we'll start with the wall one, okay? First thing you want to do is get a little smear of your filler or whatever you call it, whatever part of the country or world you might be watching this video. Okay, mud, I know they call that in America. Okay, make good around your hole like this, okay? Get your repair patch, sit him on your hole like that. Get a clean trowel and just squash that stuff that's underneath to the edges, okay? Like so. All right, as you can see, it will start to stick that plasterboard down, okay? That paper there, all right? And if you haven't put enough on, which is it's good, it's, it's, it's better to not put enough on than too much, you can actually get your knife there and cut off, okay? Cut off excess that you don't need, like so. So that corner, and, and I'll probably just go over like that okay so there we go 
So I'll just stick this bottom edge down with a little filler. Work my knife over it. Okay. And then any excess paper, you'll find that it will just tear itself off, okay? So you can already see now that this is starting to become quite neat and tidy now, yeah? So we'll move on to this one. So that's hanging in the ceiling. So really you could take that screw out and do it or it's perfectly fine to just do it, okay? While it's in the ceiling, because the paper's nice and flexible, okay? And you can just put some filler on each piece and then work it out to the edges, okay? Like so. Okay, so then just stick that down, like so, being gentle, because remember this is paper, and then get your bigger knife, thinning trowel, and just run it up and squish that filler out, okay? And you'll find that it will give you a nice surface to work with, okay? Just remove any filler excess that you actually push out from behind that paper like so so at this stage you now want to let this go off this is not going to take long maximum five minutes and then we'll come back to this okay well i've let this go off for five minutes but i've also kept my filler um, that I've got left over that I want to use for filling nice and moist in the pot there, yeah? Okay, so it's still usable, this filler. So what you want to do now is get a small trowel, get some filler on there, okay? Look, on that repair patch there. Like so. And then you want to get a big trowel. Like so, make sure it's clean. That looks dirty, but it, it is clean. And then it's, it's very easy, look, okay? And you see, it will fill up that patch and it will fill up the edges of your plasterboard where you've kept that paper, okay? And it's gonna give you a nice smooth finish. You give it one sand and then you can paint it. And no one will ever know that you damaged your wall um, in any way. Okay, so you, you might want to give this another fill. Um, not going to let it go off, okay? And then I'll move on to this one, because we, we're obviously doing two. I want to get them both done. Um, and if this was multiple holes for a ceiling where we pulled cables, you'd want to just get this done um, as quick as you can, because you don't want to be coming back to the same job um, to just fill some holes, okay? It just looks more professional for the client. They see you sort of made an effort, even if, you know, you're not painting it or making it good. It just looks good that you've uh, made the effort just to make those holes good. I know there's a lot of guys that won't even attempt um, any of this, but I always put on, you know, my quotes and stuff that I will do a make good and a first fill. Um, and the, cl the client loves that, okay? Especially if they're um, elderly, um, you know, it just saves them that bit and it just means you can you can crack on if you if this was like a, a box you'd cut in at least you can go and second fix yeah and, and get finished and you haven't got to wait to come back and second fix and get the painter in so that's now enough on that i'm going to let that go off and then i'll revisit this um once that's dried off while i'm letting that go off we'll just have a quick sneak peek behind the wall because we're able to do it on this one Okay, you can see the plug is in there and there's the piece of timber there that we fixed above the ceiling, okay? So they'll just sit there happily now and, and go off. Okay, we're about 15 minutes in now. As you can see, the filler around the outside is completely gone off and all that's left to go off are these um, darker patches where the filler's still wet, okay? So we'll let that go off, let that go fully white and we'll revisit this. 
So I've just mixed up my final filler there. I just want to show you the consistency compared to the first one. It's a lot thinner um, because that's that 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 you've put on there is going to suck the moisture out of this quicker. So you want to make it a lot thinner, not runny, but look, it's a lot thinner and it will eventually drop off of the drop off the trowel there. Okay. So all we're doing is taking up any little gaps that we've missed. The first pass, we're just going to fill them up with this this last pass now. Okay. So again, on with the small trowel and then working off with a big trowel. And you're just taking up all them little lumps and bumps that you can get first time. You're just getting rid of them now with this. This is what, you know, a skin coat, nearly. So take it off. If you put too much on, take it off. And as you can see now, that plug that we put in there is completely smooth. And it's sort of disappeared now. I and mean, then where we doubled up with a plasterboard paper there, that's given us a nice edge to fill to. We can now sand and finish this, okay? And then we move on to the second patch. And this just takes practice. I mean, if you've never done this before, if it's the first time, you're going to undertake something like this just just take time it's very rush um I, I could probably do a patch in in a couple of minutes with fixing the timber and if if i had to it doesn't take long and, and like i said previously it just gives you a nice finish and it just looks good the client has then not got to fiddle about with this and, and you can walk away from the job knowing that literally the paint has got to come in and just um just finish off Need a tiny bit more there. So that's it. I'm happy with that now. I'm going to let that go off fully, and then I will um, give you a quick sand and show you the end result. As you can see, we are nearly there now with this filler. This is, it's, it, it looks wet, but this is fully dry now. This has gone off now, lovely. This is still um, looking wet, but it isn't. So what we'll do now, we'll give it a final skim coat uh, and then we'll, we'll sand it and we'll show you the, I'll show you the finished result on that. So I've just mixed up my final filler there. I just want to show you the consistency compared to the first one. It's a lot thinner um, because that's, that, that, that you've put on there is going to suck the moisture out of this quicker. So you want to make it a lot thinner, not runny, but look, it's a lot thinner and it will eventually drop off of the drop off the trowel there. Okay. So all we're doing is taking up any little gaps that we've missed. The first pass, we're just going to fill them up with this this last pass now. Okay. So again, on with the small trowel and then working off with a big trowel. And you're just taking up all them little lumps and bumps that you can get first time. You're just getting rid of them now with this. This is what, you know, a skin coat, really. So take it off. If you put too much on, take it off. And as you can see now, that plug that we put in there is completely smooth and it's sort of disappeared now. I mean, where we doubled up with a plasterboard paper there, that's given us a nice edge to fill to. We can now sand and finish this, okay? Move on to the second patch. And this just takes practice. I mean, if you've never done this before, if it's the first time you're going to undertake something like this, just, just take your time, it's very rush. Um, I, I could probably do a patch in, in a couple of minutes with fixing the timber and if, if I had to. It doesn't take long. And, and like I said previously, it just gives you a nice finish. And it just looks good. The client has then not got to fiddle about with this. And, and you can walk away from the job knowing that literally the paint has got to come in and just um, just finish off. So we need a tiny bit more there.
So that's it, I'm happy with that now. I'm gonna let that go off fully and then I will um, give you a quick sand and show you the end result. Right, it's been a little while now. Um, not, not entirely sure, I've, I've just gone and come back and back on this now. So as you can see, it's completely dry now. So all I've got is a little sanding block. You wanna use a sanding block otherwise you're gonna get a load of high and low spots if you don't use a block behind and a bit of 180 grit paper. So I'm just gonna get on with this and I'll show you the, uh, the end result. All right, there we go, finished. So perfectly smooth now. Looks like there's um, a raised edge there. There isn't, it's perfectly flat, okay? So if you found the video interesting, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you on the next one. Take care.